Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another edition of Prophecy in the News. Once again, our guests, L.A. Marzulli, Richard Shaw, we're going to talk about a biblical subject. And L.A. Marzulli and Richard, that biblical subject is UFOs. <laughs> and uh, UFOs, a biblical subject? Yes, mm. indeed. Let me read from Ephesians 6, uh, 12, and I'm just reading this right out of the good old-fashioned King, King James Bible. For he wrestled not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, archons, these would be very, very high-level spiritual mm -hmm. beings who are evil, by the way, against powers. These would be all, all their delegated authorities against the rulers of the darkness of this world, meaning that the dark things of this world are not just accidental, they have rulership behind them, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. And boy, isn't there spiritual wickedness in high places today. Well, all of that is governed by a hierarchy of angels led by Satan himself. And here's the kicker. Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. Now, the air would be the atmospheric heavens. Uh, in Scripture, air uh, refers to the, uh, the lower heavens, if you will, from ground level up to the top, say, of a, of a mountain. And so we're talking about something that operates in conjunction with humanity on a day-to-day, 24-7 uh, basis. And yet we sort of push that aside and say, well, it doesn't really exist mm -hmm. until suddenly we see a light in the sky and it's on the evening news. And then this gives the, the news announcer an opportunity to laugh and say, oh, oh, another UFO, you know, somebody else is crazy out Little there. Green man. And, and so the whole thing is dismissed. But I'll tell you what, you need to watch Watchers 8 and you'll take another look at the UFO phenomenon. And, and I say that it's a biblical subject and let's kick off our conversation at that level. It is a biblical subject. Well, absolutely. We're told that uh, in, in Scripture that the elect would be deceived. We're told that men will faint from fear from what is coming upon the earth. Lest those days were shortened, no flesh would survive. Paul warns us, Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders. We, we've discussed this other times on this show. Mm -hmm. and, and the problem is there seems to be like a disconnect with a lot of Christians. They, they look at the phenomena and they just, it's like cognitive dissonance. They, they have nothing to really base this on. So, well, it's really not happening. Don't bother me with the facts. And yet, the UFO sightings are up now well over, well over 200%, from like 350 a month to well over 2,000 per month. They are sighted that, everywhere. On that note, I want to talk with Richard Shaw for just a moment because he's holding in his hands a, uh, a camera that goes all the way back to 1998, right? Right, back in the mid-90s, uh, Sony made these cameras that had a feature called Night Shot, and it was basically so you could see in the dark. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a little uh, infrared uh, light down here in the bottom uh, this happens to be a, a TR940 if someone wants to know what model it is. But now these cameras are being used for a, a purpose that no one ever anticipated. And it, it first started out in Mexico when uh, a, a guy who likes to look for UFOs, since there's so many down there, um, had two cameras like this on a mount. One in night shot mode, which also works in the daytime to see infrared signatures. Another one just like this without night shot turned on, and he was looking at a spot in the sky. With the night shot camera, he could see a UFO. On the other camera, there was nothing there, which was our first clue that we've got cloaked craft in the air <coughs> watching us. Now, this goes back to the Book of Enoch where they called them the Watchers, yeah. hence the title of our series. Now, and, and again, that's a, a great title. Uh, the, uh, the DVD is Watchers 8. You can learn more about how this, this thing operates. But the point is, 24-7, there are these things circulating around through the atmospheric heavens. Paul talks about it in Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. Paul mentions it as uh, the, an atmospheric phenomenon, prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's misidentified, I think, as creatures from other planets. Sure. We're really talking about fallen angels, right? Mm -hmm. in, in, my, in my opinion, I think, you know, both of you will concur. That's exactly what we're talking about. Um, the fallen ones are manifesting. Um, we have you on camera, actually, in Watchers 8, 
and you say, you say it appears that they are on maneuvers, and that's exactly what it looks like. They're flying in a V formation um, in, in, in the spectrum of light, which we can't see normally with, with, mm -hmm. the, with the human eye, uh, infrared spectrum, and they're, they're flying through in this V formation, and you can see th some of the, whatever they are, craft are moving from side to side, they are conducting maneuvers. Right. I mean, it is absolutely astounding. There's one shot, we called it the, the trident, for lack of a better yeah. word. But you see this, this object in the sky, and it's all lit up. It's very high up. And underneath that, there are objects which seem to be hanging. All of a sudden, they, they are let go, and they are under control. You see them. There's four of them. They begin to maneuver like this through the atmosphere, and then they coalesce. And after they coalesce, they vanish. This is high strangeness. Yeah. It's not our stuff. It's not you're not you know you're not U.S. military. It's something else. And the and church and that, needs to that, wake up. That particular uh, video that he's talking about uh, was not infrared. It was just visible. But right. the problem is, uh, a lot of these things are out there all the time, but they're really a long ways away. Like the trident. Was. Yeah, yeah. We actually call it the scepter. The scepter. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you uh, zoom in on it. It's like, what's that? It looks like a point of light in the sky or a star until you zoom in on it and then all this detail emerges, which is why so many UFO shots are grainy and noisy and all of that right. because the camera, a lot of times, especially the cheaper cameras, well, are in digital zoom mode. The same is true of airplanes. When yeah. you see an airplane 10 miles away, exactly. you, you see a little sparkling light mm -hmm. and you don't have any detail, mm -hmm. but it's there. But that was one of the weirdest ones I've ever seen, the one that L.A. just referred to, and, and also it was seen in Brazil. So there's stuff going on in South America and in Mexico that is just way over the top right now. I want to suggest something based on your remark that they're in Mexico and that they're in South America. Could it be that they're seen more there because there is less of a cloak or a veil uh, over a veil of protection, if you will, over those countries than, than there is over the United States because of our Christian population. Maybe they're more visible there. Maybe here, where we, we have uh, at least a remnant of the Spirit of God That's protecting us, watching over That's us, maybe they're less visible here. I'm not sure. Well, and, and that would tie into powers and principalities, the cosmocrators, archons in, in the Greek. But basically, we, we have scripture where Daniel shoots up this prayer, 21 days later the angel comes and he says one of the most cryptic passages in all of scripture. I would have come here, I was dispatched the moment you prayed, but it took me 21 days and I had to fight through the, uh, the prince of Persia. And well, why can't he just do an end run? Why can't he just fly 1,500 miles one way or the other and pop in that way? No, he's got to go back and get reinforcements and then there's this battle that takes place. He finally breaks through. That's, that shows, it gives us a glimpse, one of the few glimpses in all of the Bible of this heavenly battle which is going on. That prince of Persia who controls that area has never been deposed. And that begs the question, what areas are under the control of the good guys? What areas are in control of the bad guys? Mm -hmm. You mentioned South America. Perhaps there are, there are gateways and portals which are controlled already by the fallen ones. Maybe because of the Christian population in America, and this is conjecture, I admit, maybe because of the prayers of the saints in this country, um, we're protected on some level. Maybe those gateways and portals are still somewhat controlled. Don't know. Now, there is a, a, a ufological uh, <laughs> order of things, if you will. There are little gray creatures. Mm -hmm. There are saucer-shaped disks, although they don't always have to be saucer-shaped. There are some gigantic things that, that, are, that have odd shapes, triangular, quadrangular. Uh, some Pyramid. of them have been huge, maybe a quarter of a mile in diameter, people say. Uh, but they all have one thing in common. They seem to be on patrol, on maneuvers. They're doing something. Um, they're, they're trying to accomplish something, shall we say. And in our day, that may be very, very significant because we seem to be on the verge of entering a new era uh, in, in spiritual warfare. When they show up, and this is, I can't stress this enough, and I know it sounds crazy, but at some point there's going to be a revealing. All a person needs to do is look, look what the other side of the aisle, look what the New Ages are saying, and they're talking about disclosure, disclosure. At some point, there's going to be an incident where a mile-wide craft or whatever just appears and just sits there, and all the cameras are on it and everybody's talking about it. When that happens, everything shifts. The world as we know it just came to an abrupt end. It hit a brick wall, 
and we are in uncharted territory. And unless a Christian understands what he or she is looking at, they mm -hmm. can be so easily deceived. And remember, Jesus' own words, even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. What Absolutely. a dire warning. Yeah, and, and the Antichrist is going to be empowered by yes. some sort of supernatural mm -hmm. force. Or, and, and I would imagine that in that day, that force will represent itself as a force from another world, another planet, another uh, system. I agree uh, wholeheartedly. And the world will just fall right in line because they have been preconditioned. I remember uh, there was a sci-fi movie on television called V. Sure. And they, you had the very scenario you described mm -hmm. a moment ago where you had very large ships that suddenly appeared in the atmosphere just hovering. And they presented themselves as Earth saviors, which they weren't. They were reptilian creatures. Right. Who else is a reptilian creature, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, other than Satan himself? Uh, and then, uh, of course, there's Independence Day. Same, same scenario. Reptilian creatures come to take over planet Earth, and you have Earth's last stand, you know, <coughs> brave, <coughs> excuse me, brave aerial battles of all kinds. Mm -hmm. And uh, in other words, we're being prepared for this stuff, right? The Ancient Alien series on the History Channel, I think it's in the sixth or seventh season, and they're, they're constantly promulgating the idea that ancient astronauts visited Earth thousands of years ago and were responsible for not only creating these artifacts that we see, like the Great Pyramid and Sox Mine and other places all over the Earth, mm -hmm. but they manipulated the genome and they created modern man. This is what I call the coming great deception. And what's interesting is it fits right into the Darwinian paradigm. It fits right into what is, is you know, sacrosanct in both academia and the scientific community, the Darwinian paradigm, which governs everyone, pretty much everyone, except the born-again, spirit-filled Christian way of thinking. Oh, we just evolved. There is no God. There is no supernatural, blah, blah, blah. So how did we get here? And as a Christian, we believe that God, ex nihilo, created everything, just spoke it into existence, and here we are. And so we have a real disparity between worldviews. But the History Channel promulgates this every single week. They have a new episode, Ancient Astronauts, E.T., the aliens, and they're going to come back. They're already on board with it. No, well, it's propaganda, basic propaganda. It is. Propaganda 101. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about... Uh, about a little closer encounter than a disc or something in the sky. Let's talk about little grays. Now you uh, have covered that subject. Uh, in Watchers 8 you speak of, of grays and you speak of abductions and let's talk about what those are and how they fit into this bi biblical paradigm. Well a gray is, is some sort of a hybrid being um, and there's lots of different theories on that. My particular theory is this is a created biological shell. Um, there's a difference between fallen angels and demons. Demons, in my opinion, are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. Fallen angels are fallen angels. And they, they earnestly seek bodies that right. they can inhabit. And in order to <clears throat> interface in this dimension, they have to possess something. So I believe the fallen one has created these biological suits, if you will, which are, in essence, the greys. And these demonic entities can then go into them and move and inhabit. This is why they all look very much, very similar. They all look like sort of clones. They have jerky movements, the grays, mm -hmm. but yeah. the, the larger entities that are seen are not. And they are the overlords according to the abductees. And I realize this sounds just crazy and it sounds <laughs> bizarre, but may I remind our viewers that we're the people that believe in, in you know, a, a fallen angel appearing, Satan himself appearing at Jesus after 40 days and taking him up on a mountain and showing him in a twinkling of an eye all the kingdoms of the world. How is that possible? And then moving him over to the Temple Mount and say, cast yourself down. I mean, we see a, 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 a real direct um, manifestation of the fallen one in, in, in real space time right here on earth interacting with Jesus in this battle. It is unbelievable. So why, why do we sort of, you know, oh, that can't be happening today when it is, when all the evidence we've uncovered in our watches series points exactly to that? Well, I've actually talked to, I have a Christian friend that, that you know, thinks all this is just totally crazy. It's all science fiction. And, you know, it's, it's like, but, but no, it's like, it, 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 uh, people like that believe that the miracle stopped at, at the time of the early church. And that was uh -huh. it. And there hasn't been anything since then. So this is kind of a difficult concept for a lot of believers to grasp that this is actually going on right now. And we have actual physical evidence of these mm -hmm. things happening. Physical evidence, uh, which would be 
A great example is what happened to Captain Robert Salas, uh, who's a commander, was a commander in 1967 of a, a missile base in Montana where a ship came down and disabled 10 nuclear warheads. And yeah, this and happened to more than one base. Without touching them, without touching them physically, somehow okay, they were able to disable. Let's take that one from the top because that's one of the more fascinating aspects of Watchers 8. Rick? Oh, by the way, before we do that, I just wanted to mention to everybody, you are going to be speaking at uh, our Prophecy Conference, uh, and mm -hmm. that would be Pikes Peak 2, July 25th through 27th. You and Richard are both going to be there, right? Yes, yes, we right. will be. And you'll Looking have a, to it. a lot of this in motion picture form, the, the latest word from your research and mm -hmm. so forth. Bob has asked me to uh, share some of the details of the entire Watcher series that we haven't shown to anyone. That'd be, that'll be great. <laughs> And again, that's uh, Pikes Peak 2. You need to know more about it. And uh, watch this. Hello, Gary Stearman. Let's talk for a moment about Pikes Peak 2, the Prophecy Summit at Colorado Springs, July 25th through 27th. New discoveries all around. Bob, it's going to be great. It is. The Marriott Hotel in the shadow of Pikes Peak. You couldn't ask for a better place or better speakers. Better speakers like Dr. Thomas Ice, perhaps the world's leading authority on the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. You don't want to miss that. And Bob, Bill Salas is going to be with us. Showdown in Iran, a brand new discovery, a new prophecy that's been forgotten for 2,000 years. Mm, talk about timely. And what about <laughs> L.A. Marzulli? Never without a surprise of some kind. Back from Peru with the latest on the Nephilim. Last but not least, Stan Deo. Stan Deo. Speaking of new discoveries, Stan Deo is going to be talking about something you've never heard before. The discovery of the Garden of Eden. You're going to want to be there. July 25th through 27th, Colorado Springs, Pikes Peak 2, the Prophecy Summit. Okay, let's take up where we left off, and that would be this abduction. Uh, and you cover this in, in Watchers 8. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Robert Salas abduction. Yes, the Robert Salas abduction. And, and, and Rick did an incredible job of, of telling the story, not only uh, verbally, but graphically. We have some, some wonderful drawings that were done, um, and, and we sort of did a reenactment in Watchers 8, which is just incredible, and they, and they move. But, but it, look, we are dealing with entities that, in my opinion, mirror what we see in Scripture. And just, we all, m most of us are familiar with the backstory or the story when Peter's in jail and the angel appears to him. And Peter's like fog in his brain. He, he's not sure what's going on. He's chained to a wall. The chains are manipulated. They fall off of Peter. He looks over and everyone is, is switched off. The jail, his jailmates are switched off. They're asleep. The jail door opens by itself. They walk in the hallway. The Roman soldiers are asleep. How is that possible? Then the big gate to the prison opens by itself. We are looking at angelic beings that can manipulate matter and energy in ways that we don't know. Mm -hmm. It's beyond our physics. And now we move into Robert Salas' abduction. It's an angelic being, but it's a fallen angelic being. And what do we see? His wife is switched off. He's paralyzed. He can't move. He's levitated. He is flown through the window. And as Dr. Jacobs says, and Richard does a marvelous job on this when he cuts back to an interview that we did with Dr. David Jacobs, who says, and everyone goes through the window, you know, and they think they're the only person doing it, but everyone goes through the window. In Jacobs' words, this is future physics. But we have a biblical um, uh, story that is very similar with Peter in the jail cell. What's, what's interesting, too, let me, and what L.A. is saying is that the more we study this stuff, the people that are having these experiences often have that they describe what it's like uh, and, and it's it's the light at the end of the tunnel which is very much like a near-death experience so what I think we're getting is a glimpse of what it may be like to travel through another dimension hmm. it's like something that that's maybe we could actually look at it a bit more from a scientific standpoint of what actually happens when when you when you do something like that, because uh, there's so many accounts of it. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, the movie that just came out with, uh, you know, Heaven is for Real, I mean, kind of proves that even this four-year-old kid had these experiences and couldn't have possibly made up what he mm -hmm. saw. So these things are real experiences, and, and they're all connected with this thread of spirituality. And usually when these abductions occur, the, the, the little gray beings we spoke of a minute ago are present. And they're sort of doing their duty, right. good little soldiers. 
Uh, you actually found evidence in the reality of Gray's a handprint or series of handprints on a wall, which I think is fascinating. It, it was unbelievable. In, in, in what we covered this in Watcher 7. This was Dr. Roger Lear. He went to a site and um, they used infrared and they, lo and behold, on the wall, on the drywall, at windowsill level, there was a handprint. It looked like a small child, except there were only four fingers instead of five and the end of the fingers were bulbous. They rounded out like this. Well, the owner of the house allowed them to cut the drywall out, which is what they did. And we took that into the lab. That's why Watcher 7 is called physical evidence. And we took it into the lab and we took a sample of whatever this material was and put it into a scanning electron microscope. And we were able to look at it. And the tech who was there, and I, I'll never forget it. And I asked him point blank. I said, you know, without putting words in your mouth, is this human? And he just looked at me and he said, no. Hmm. You know, no. basically, no. Whatever this is, whatever this, whatever created the handprint was not human. And, and only, the only reason being that there were, weren't the, the elements that you would normally elements find weren't there in a hand, a, a human handprint, because we know what kind of chemicals residue sure should, should be have left. been there. Yeah, and, and it, it wasn't, wasn't there. Wasn't there. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. You know, we're being fed a bill of goods. We're being lulled to sleep. I think one of Satan's greatest. Uh, devices is convincing everybody that he doesn't exist. Sure. Uh, the fallen angels convincing everybody that they really don't exist so that if somebody said, I saw a fallen angel, immediately he's branded as crazy. What a, what a wonderful way to operate if you want to uh, conduct a clandestine operation is to convince everybody you don't exist so that if you show up, you're crazy. <laughs> Yeah, right. If, if it's you show very up, easy to do that. I mean, it's very easy just to disregard the whole thing off as it's totally baloney. Except when you start analyzing physical evidence of of visitations, shall we call it, uh, and you put it in the lab in an electron microscope and you do EDX analysis. EDX is energy dispersant X-ray spectroscopy. That's what that stands for. Essentially, you put a crosshairs on the in the microscope view and what you want to examine, and up comes this graph of all the elemental compounds of that one area. We do that every time we take something into the lab. We've proved things to be unusual, and we've disproved things as being normal. And by and the that's way, what we need to do. On Watchers 8, you, you'll be able to see what uh, Richard is talking about there. It's, uh, the graph is quite visible, yeah. and, and the evidence is quite visible. Again, and I want to come back in the closing moments here to, to what I consider to be the central subject of all of this, mm -hmm. and that is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> because that's, that's our primary interest. We are followers of his. We want to convince everyone of the reality of Jesus, his plan of salvation, of uh, sanctification, of redemption, mm -hmm. his prophetic plan to return to earth, to set up the kingdom, the rapture of the church, all of these things are great realities to us. We teach them to other people, but there's this dark side out here that everybody laughs at. And I, I think you, you too have been raised up to sort of chip away at, at that prejudice against belief in the dark side. Well, we, the title of the series is, is Watchers, and, and that's what we are. We're watchmen. And what we're trying to do is alert the church first and then the non-believer second as to what is not coming but is already here and is manifesting everywhere it's on a global level this stuff is real and that's why we that's why we're in you know in a lab with a scanning electron microscope with an edx feature to show people that this is real scientific stuff something is going on the church needs to wake up and understand the times are extremely yeah. prophetic and they herald the return of the king uh, the Bible says that we are to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Now, to be wise as a serpent means to be totally aware of the dark side, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And the church, I think, has been lulled into a kind of Jesus loves me, this I know slumber. And Jesus loves me, this I know is wonderful. A soft it's landing pad, as we've soft been landing told. Pad. <laughs> let, let me just jump in and say, and say something. We are admonished by Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, to put on the whole armor of God. Well, what's the armor there for? Yeah. Why would we put on the armor? Because we are at war. And the church, we all need to come to an understanding that we are on, as I speak right now, a war footing against the kingdom of darkness. And unless we understand what the enemy is up to and who he is and how to fight him, 
What are we doing? Yeah. What well we said. Doing? Well said. By the way, it's Watchers 8, which we're offering uh, for nineteen ninety five plus shipping and handling. Uh, I believe this has about, am I right, 89 minutes. Yeah, I just glanced at the last, uh, at the bottom of this uh, uh, c case, and 89 minutes, by the way, which will keep you on the edge of your seat because it has Christian topics couched in contemporary events, things that are really happening right now. And you need to know about this. It, I think it'll enhance your faith. We're also, as we often do, uh, offering a package. If you would like more, we have the Watchers 8 package, yours for $69.95, which would include not only the DVD Watchers 8, but further evidence and on the trail of the Nephilim, plus two bonus DVDs from our Orlando meeting in March in which uh, L.A. spoke on the worldwide UFO explosion and his trip to Peru. So all of those items that we're calling the Watchers 8 package, yours for $69.95, plus shipping and handling. That would be about a $115 value. And listen, the whole package will give you the complete understanding of what we have only had time to t talk about a, a, a little bit today. Just touched on some of the, the interesting things. You need to go into more detail and more depth, and uh, there's a lot more than we've had a chance to talk about, L.A. Absolutely. Well, you know, we live in a special time. I don't know how to, to say it any more emphatically. This is not your dad's world anymore. Things in the last 30 years have radically uh, shifted. The center of gravity uh, is, is shifting, just as Jesus said it would. He said, when you see these things begin, to come to pass, look up for your redemption draws night. We're, we're seeing these things begin to come to pass. The supernatural is becoming the natural. And what can I say? Uh, you, you need to be aware of it. Now, here at Prophecy in the News, we talk about Bible prophecy. But your calling is to talk about what the Bible <coughs> says would actually happen in the latter days. And, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to warn the church of what is coming. And when it comes, when it finally hits, even the elect would be deceived, men faint from fear for what is coming on the earth. I keep using those scriptures. That's what's there. It's a dire warning. And, and we're like, we're out there waving our hands as frantically as we possibly can, trying to call people's attention to what is already here. Richard Shaw, Shaw great job on your uh, video work. It's just as usual, you've outdone yourself. Thanks a lot. Ellie Marzulli, may the Lord bless your work. And Thank you, Gary. I'm Gary Stearman, wishing you a great day in the Lord. Study, show yourself approved, find out what's really going on, and keep looking up, everybody. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported program made possible by our many friends around the world. Be sure you tune in every day for breaking news and our daily prophetic news updates at prophecyinthenews.com or follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash prophecyinthenews.